Hi guys, I'm Nicole and I'm going to share a little bit about Padlet with you guys today. Um, this is another one of our LIU Learn On webinar series. Um, and we're just focusing on Padlet as a resource. I'm going to show you kind of the ins and outs and do a little bit more of a deep dive on this tool. It has come up in some of our previous webinars about different ways to use it um, for discussion or to hold like a back channel chat. So I'm going to show you maybe some more tricks that you can use with Padlet. Uh, this is our team that has been working tirelessly on all of our Learn On webinars. Uh, you'll see my contact information is highlighted there. So if you need to reach out to me, please feel free to email me um, and ask me any questions if I don't answer them here in today's webinar. I am going to put the information here in the chat that gives you a link to this slide deck. It will be on our recorded webinars page probably this afternoon, um, a little bit after here. We'll start uploading all of our videos from all of our webinars today. So our webinar meeting norms, um, the chat is actually not disabled because we have such a small group today. If you guys want to use the chat, please feel free to. Um, I do appreciate when you use the Q&A for the questions for the most part, because it just it's a bigger panel on my screen. So it's easier for me to see the questions and make sure that I've answered them versus the chat where things start to scroll away and disappear so I don't see them anymore. Um, so chat is totally open. Microphone and camera have been disabled and they will stay disabled. If you have a converse or a question, you can raise your hand and I can unlock the ability to unmute yourself. So you can unmute yourself and just ask me the question that way too. Um, so please feel free to do that as well. So Q&A, raising your hand. As a reminder, at the end, we're gonna make sure that you get the Act 48 link so that you can um, earn your credit for completion in this webinar. So really quickly, just a couple of the changing expectations for online learning. Um, just a reminder that when you're utilizing any of the tools and resources that we're sharing with you, that less is more and that it's really important to prioritize and balance. My message for the last two weeks has really truly been take what you thought you were going to teach, cut it in half and then cut it in half again, because that's probably what's actually going to get covered and is probably what would be more appropriate to cover. So that idea of prioritizing what is really most important to cover at this point in time. When it comes to video, the importance of seeing your face whenever possible, that's one of the reasons that my video is on so that you can associate a face with a voice and with this presentation. And to limit your length to no more than six minutes whenever possible. If you can, chunk it into smaller chunks, that's fine too. And when you can, to be really clear with your objectives and your expectations with your students, to identify how long it's going to take to complete a task with students, and to organize and sequence your instructions. So today, I'm going to jump right to our webinar outcomes and just say this is a deep dive into Padlet. I'm going to show you what's available on the free version of it and what you can use it for and do with it in your classroom. I'm going to show you a variety of different ways to lock it down a little bit or to open it up a little bit and what you can do with Padlet as a tool. If I am showing you something and you're like, wait, stop, show me again, please stop me because that is the only tool I'm looking at today. I'm gonna to hopefully give you some your ideas for using it in your classroom as I start to show you the features and try to show you different ways maybe you could have students utilize this. So really quickly, if you're not familiar with Padlet as an online tool, it's a location where you can post comments or create like a bulletin board I like to call it a digital cork board. It's a great place to just throw ideas. I use it a lot of times just for myself, brainstorming, um, but it's also a great place to direct students for that sort of thing, like brainstorming or to list ideas or even categorizing ideas. There's a number of different things we can do with it. It can be very collaborative or you can lock it down and it can be completely private. That is entirely up to you. It has the ability to be moderated, which I think is a great piece. Um, I used to be a seventh and eighth grade English language arts teacher. And one of the things I like to do sometimes with my seventh and eighth graders, depending on the class, is have the option of moderating comments and posts to kind of know what the students were saying before they said it. And you also have the ability to have students upvote or comment on posts. And I'm going to hopefully be able to show you that. And it comes in two different versions, the free version and the paid version. The free version allows you to have up to three Padlets running at the same time. The paid version, which I think is about $8 a month, will allow unlimited number of Padlets. So if you want to have a whole bunch running at the same time, that's fine. Um, I'm going to hopefully be able to show you kind of what you can do to navigate the free version and use it as needed. So I'm actually going to go out to Padlet. A number of the slides in the slide deck are really just placeholders 
as I go in and show you how the tool works and whatnot, you'll be able to kind of glance back at the slide deck if you'd like to, which I put into the Zoom chat. So I'm gonna go up here to the dashboard. So when you log into Padlet, this is what the dashboard looks like. So it'll give you a greeting. And if you have any Padlets, they'll be across here. You can also archive them. These are the ones you've made, the ones you've shared, liked, et cetera, or create folders for them. You can join someone else's Padlet from here. There's a gallery, which I will hopefully be able to show you. And then there's the button to upgrade into the premium version. So what I'm actually going to do is make a Padlet because I wanna show you the number of different ways of creating a Padlet. So when I go to make a Padlet, it gives me a couple of different ways to start with a blank Padlet. And I wanna take a moment just to look at these because it really depends on what you would like to utilize the tool for. Are you gonna use it for a collaborative tool? Are you gonna use it for a delivery tool? Are you gonna have, if your students are over 13, are you gonna have them create accounts and make their own Padlets to share back to you or to collaborate with a classmate on something? These would all be options that you could do with this. So the traditional Padlet that was pretty much the first Padlet that existed when they first created Padlet was the wall. It's pretty much a, a just you can pack your content and it all layers itself in there. All right, there's the canvas, which means you can drag and scatter the ideas that you put on the Padlet and group them or connect them. I think the canvas is nice for brainstorming ideas. If students are all kind of throwing ideas at something, just to put them in a place and then start to group them. There's the stream, which really works like a Facebook stream or a chat stream where things just line up, line up, line up, line up and come down. The grid, which aligns, aligns everything in nice rows and neat boxes for those of you who are a little like me and like everything organized. Um, I'm a big fan of the grid for the organization piece because yeah, everything has its place. Um, the shelf I really like because you can actually create columns. So I can label my columns and have students put their ideas in certain columns. I could label them by class period and have the students share their information by class period. The back channel creates kind of a chat I like, what I like about this back channel is I can create this back channel and use it like a chat. And when I archive it, it disappears. So it's not like the students are still in the back channel after I leave, um, chatting away and doing whatever. So once I can archive it, I don't have to worry about them logging back into the back channel. There's a map where you can add a map and actually start to connect points. I think this is really great um, for certain kinds of lessons. I like the idea of students creating and collaborating on maps. And then there's the timeline where you can actually place content along a horizontal line. Now that horizontal line could be a timeline or if you have another way that you wanna organize things horizontally, I wouldn't let the idea of it being a timeline necessarily destroy it for you. So I'm gonna go in and select grid for now because I like the fact that the boxes are somewhat organized in the grid. And it comes up with its own title for it, et cetera, its own background, which are all modifiable. What's nice about Padlet is as soon as you create it, this comes up for you to modify it. So you can start renaming it and go right in and start tweaking and changing things. So what I'm gonna kind of do is go through this modify panel with you so you can see the different things that you can change and why they might be important. So obviously I can change my title, I can change my description. That might be where I put my directions for my students if I have them coming to this Padlet to do something. I can add something called an icon, which I'll show you what it does. It's just for fun. So you see a smiley face. So if you want to get creative, or I can turn off the icon. So you'll notice I'll have to go back. I can also add my own. So if I'm categorizing them, so on and so forth. So that was the icon. Address is unique to my Padlet. You'll notice here I can change it. So if I wanna give it a label that's easy to type into a device, so for instance, maybe um, my students are working from mobile devices, sometimes not just on their computers, and maybe they're looking over mom or dad's shoulder who brought up the assignment real fast while they're working from home, um, relabeling it something like, you know, ELA unit one lesson 25A or something like that might make it easier. So that address is now unique to my Padlet. Over here, I can change my appearance. So in this case, I can change my wallpaper. I can put my own pictures in there if I want. I can, you know, change to a gradient. I have to like blue. We'll do that, pictures, etc. There's a whole bunch of variety in there. I can change my font, my color scheme, 
I typically like, you can't see that it changed to a dark, but I typically like a darker color scheme. And this is where the posting comes in. So this is, I think, a little more important. This is where I like to focus um, first when I'm working with a Padlet, especially if I'm trying to determine if I'm using it with my students. So first comes attribution. Display the author's name above each post. I always like to have attribution turned on so that I'm certain that I know who is doing what. Um, and then new post position, and that there's a name attributed to the commentary or whatever has been posted. So where I want the post to appear, do I want new posts to be first or do I want them to be last? So in this case, I want them first. So they're gonna probably appear up here towards the top and the older posts will start to move towards the bottom. I can decide if I'd like to leave, have um, viewers leave comments on posts. Now for me, if I'm having students post ideas and other people react and add to them, I might include comments. I can also do reactions. Now, reactions are neat, but there's something in here I don't want you to get kind of straight off on. It was something that got me really excited and then I was like, wait a second. So reactions right now I have selected none, but I do want to show you what you can do with reactions. So like allows people to like posts. You can upvote or downvote posts, which I think has the potential to do like a positive negative, depending on what you're doing with the Padlet. Um, it might be nice if you're having them vote on something. Um, a star, you know, giving a post of one out of five might not be something that you want to allow, but this can be elusive. The idea of grading allows you to give a, a numeric grade to a post. Now, the issue is it allows everyone with access to the Padlet to give a grade to a post. So what you can do if this is something that you're interested in, like, oh, I do want to grade these posts, is you leave it as none when you assign it to your students and after they're all finished in it, then you come back and change it to grade. You grade it and then return it to none so that all of your grades are then locked to the posts. So I can show you, I can go down to grade and I can change that to whatever I want. And as posts appear, I can grade them. And then after I'm done grading, I just go back to none so that none of my students can access that. So that's where reactions are. For now, I'm actually gonna put like in there. I can also go down here to content filtering. So if you're not sure how you feel about your students having access and it turning into a free for all, um, you can turn on moderations so that you have to approve the posts before they appear. You can also, and I love to turn this one on, filter profanity just in case. Um, what'll happen is nice emojis will appear when somebody tries to uh, curse in their posting if they try to do that. So now I'm gonna hit next. It says you're all set, post to your heart's content. So what I want to do, so right now it's secret. This means my Padlet's hidden from the public. If I choose to share it with someone, they should be able to access it. So again, that's up here at share. So this is one of my panels where I go back to this stuff. If I want to modify stuff again, you saw I just clicked on that gear. So I'm going to copy my address to my clipboard. I'm going to put it in the chat. So if you guys want to access it and go in and post anything, you absolutely can. And that way you have an idea of what it's like on a student end. In order to post to a Padlet, you just have to go down here. You can either double click anywhere, drag files in, paste from a clipboard, or click here to post. So you'll notice mine automatically has my name up here. So I can type my text in. I have a couple of other options as well. I can upload a file. So for instance, if I was maybe asking my students to submit a piece of work, I could go in and drag a file in of spreadsheets, presentations, PDFs. So this could be a way I had my students turn in an assignment. I can link. So if it was a Google assignment, technically they could share the link with me this way. I can actually Google stuff right into it. and Google something important. So for, for instance, if I want, boom, I've already added an image. Now you notice once I added the image, that's the only thing I can do in there. But if I had my students maybe sharing photos of something or videos of something, I can do a camera and it may not allow me just because I'm already using a camera. It's kind of a camera within a camera situation. So there we go. I can use a camera and actually do a photo booth and take a picture of myself. Oh, countdown. There we go. Enter a caption. And post a photo in there. 
So that's also an option. But you'll see over here, I can also do film. I can record my voice if I had a message. I can doodle location or link to another Padlet. I can record my screen and put it in there. So there's a couple of different options in there that you can tinker with when it comes to using a Padlet. And you'll notice I can try to drag and move it, but because I selected grid, it automatically puts my posts in a certain order. If somebody else were to try to post in here right now, that it would put your post in an order. What it should do is notify me if there's one that needs to be moderated. And it would send me a note saying, hey, you have posts that need moderated for me to go in and moderate. So up here, I can turn this into one of my favorites so I can get access to it quickly again. If I had a whole bunch of Padlets, that might be something I would do. Um, because the free version only gives you three, it's not a super important thing to do um, to make it easier to access. I can remake if I want to copy it and use it a little bit differently. You guys saw me using the share button. If I change the privacy, I can make it public if I want to, so anybody can get to it. Secret is just if you have the link, like I posted the link into the chat, so you guys have the link, so you should be able to access it. I can also password protect it so that not only do they need the link, but they have a password to get in to lock it down. I can also keep it completely private if I want to. And my permissions, I can change. I can have it so that you guys can edit. You can delete each other's posts if I wanted to. I can have it so you just can write and that's all you can do. And I can also set it up like you can read. So if I were to create maybe a learning experience that I wanted students to click and read and go through an entire experience, like a timeline or with the map one, that might be something I would want to use because then it's more, it's not a collaborative space so much as a space where I've curated content for students to experience. So that's just a different way to think about it. So I'm going to go back. Also, the things I wanted to show you is that you can get access to it via email. There are a couple of different ways. There is a share on Google Classroom for those of you who might be using Google Classroom that you can share it right directly to Google Classroom. And I wanted to show you down here the export piece. The reason I want to show you the export piece is because it's a free version, if you know you use it once but you still want to save the student posts but you you know you only have three, so you're like I need to archive or delete that one so I can make a new one for this activity. One of the things that I like to do when I do that is to save it as one of these, like save an image of it so I can see everybody's posts and I have proof that everyone did post somewhere um, in case I need it. Uh, same thing with the PDF, I can do it and then I have an actual document of it, even though I'm deleting the Padlet itself to make room to make more Padlets due to the limited amount of space. So just that's in the share button. That's really, really helpful if you know you're going to be kind of playing the three Padlet game where you're deleting one and opening one, saving it as an image or a PDF so that you have a documentation of it might be helpful. Or if you want to do that and then send it out to students so they all have a copy of it so they can use it for a set of notes, maybe if it was a way you were taking notes while you were doing a synchronous learning. So just keep that in mind. That's another way to save the Padlet so that it isn't just kind of in a one space. You can kind of free up some space in your Padlet dashboard. Are there any questions so far? I know we have a small group, but if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the Q&A. If you have anything having to do with those particular features, the share, the modify, which I showed you guys. And then there's extra information here. So I can go into enter full screen. I can send an invite. I can change my format, et cetera. So, I'm going to go back to my dashboard from this Padlet. So you notice I currently have two. And I'm going to make another one. And if I come down here, I'm going to show you, because I showed you grid, I, walls the same, canvas just allows you to drag them around, stream, they just appear in a stream. Um, down here, this will let you make columns. Back channel is kind of fun. So back channel, again, you'll notice my modified comes right back up, creates kind of a chat box. Now, the one thing about back channel, I like to immediately filter profanity. Um, if you require approval, it's going to be really hard to get people having a conversation. So I'm going to say that that's probably not one you want to do. I'm going to copy this to my clipboard and I'm going to put it in the chat. If you guys want to try the back channel chat, all you have to do is to post in here. Oh, keep working. Um, the one thing I do want to try to do though, require approvals, reactions. 
you should be able to post directly in here. So I've saved it. That should work if you want to. So essentially it shows up on the bottom of your screen here and I can still do the same thing I did in the other Padlet. Like and I can upload from my computer, I can link, I can search Google and post a picture. So it'll show up as a chat. As other people would enter, they would show up as a chat. I can enter film. And as you post, it reads like a chat feed. So this makes a nice little back channel if maybe you are presenting something and you want your students to be able to have a conversation, you can have this up as well while you're doing a synchronous piece. Or if you want to give them a collaborative space, this is a collaborative space where they can post ideas as well, just in a slightly different format. And again, it has all the same settings as pretty much all the other ones where I can share it, change my privacy, share it to Google Classroom, export all the same features that I showed you in the previous one. So that's Epic Back Channel. I'm gonna go back to my dashboard. And you'll notice I have three. Can I make a fourth? Ooh, I can make a fourth right now. All right, let's see. So we're gonna go to timeline, or let's go to map. That one's a little bit different. So you notice it already has Google Maps built in if you try to do the map. In this case, it just gives me a map of America, but if I wanted to do something else and do something global, maybe we're studying Europe. I can search for a place by name. So let's say Spain. And there it is. And if I wanted to, I could attach files right into it so that I could populate this map and kind of give my students somewhere to explore. So that when I share it with them, I might choose instead to share it not as can write, I might want to share it so that they can read it because I don't want them writing in it. I just want them using it as an experience. So that's an option as well. So this is kind of what the map looks like. I can continue to add different pieces. So maybe I have a video about Spain that I want to link in there from YouTube about Madrid, um, but then I want to add something over here uh, maybe in Portugal, in Porto, Portugal, that has something else or a different related video so that they will then have to drag around and look and find where all of the different Padlet pieces are. So this would be, and you'll notice there are, I can zoom in and zoom out. So if I was a student hunting for something, I might choose to do that. I can also You'll see I have all the Spains there, or all the, the Spains, all of the lists there, so I can jump from place to place to place across this map if I wanted to, to go and explore different things. So another just unique, different way to use Padlet. See how many it's going to let me make. Wait, let me make more. Any suggestions on how to use this with math? If I were using this with math, I would probably use it a little bit differently. So Timeline might be one way to use it with math, depending on how you would want to do it. So a t timelines are set up with dashes and it might seem at first like why would I use a timeline for math? I mean, other than dates, um, but you might be able to use it, for instance, to do steps to something. So maybe this is step one. Add to like, and I would maybe do it like a word problem kind of thing. You could do that. Um, I mean, you can do a certain amount of that sort of thing in here. What I would probably want to do with math, though, is I would use either a screen record or potentially draw, especially if I had an iPad at home that I was using this. I might choose to have students submit work through draw. So that you could do it that way. Notice I can change my canvas. 
in different colors. So maybe if I wanted to, I could do a Padlet that was the problem of the day and ask my students to submit an answer to the problem of the day. Um, and then I could differentiate it. And when I do it, so maybe I would just think it off the top of my head here. Like this might be, let's go back to the dashboard. We'll do, I'm gonna go back to this one, it's older. I'm just gonna say problem of the day. So what I could do with the problem of the day is I could either list my problem up here in the description when I'm in there in the modify, or I could even post my own problem and maybe I would upload something from the computer or I could link in or I could film if I just wanted to verbally explain it, I could also screencast it, which you guys saw earlier is one of the options, record my screen. So if I had maybe explain everything or Jamboard up um, and I was describing it, I could screencast the problem or the, an explanation of what I wanted them to do and do it that way and leave my comments open so that they could respond to it. Um, or if I wanted to post problem of the day up here and left it, the whole Padlet is one giant problem of the day, the students would then do that. The students would have the option of creating a film and uploading their explanation of the problem and how they solved it or screencasting um, while they explain how to do it on a different like and explain everything or Jamboard because they all have access. They should be able to get access at least to Jamboard. It's pretty open. Another option would be for them to draw it, um, draw their math just like I did there on the draw piece. So that would be a couple of different ways that I might use it with math. Um, I'm a big fan of having students explain how they came up with an answer um, just as much as them writing out the answer. So having them do anything in video where they can record their screen and screencast not only um, what they did and how they did it, but also verbally explain what they did and how they did it and maybe why they did it. I think sometimes doing that I, it amplifies some of the math and the math learning and it's also nice because once they do it if you're leaving it moderated as they post the other students can see other explanations depending on how you want to do it especially if it's a hard one where it's not obvious what the answer is you leave comments on it they can comment on each other's work so i hope that helps give you a couple of ideas rebecca on how you might be able to use this in particular with math um, in that particular instance do i have any other questions about how you can utilize Padlet. So my observation is I think that Padlet may have unlocked the um, limit because the limit used to be three Padlets and you just saw me create about six of them and I do not have a premium account. Um, so I would encourage you to go in and explore because that might free you up. If it becomes a situation where they don't allow you to do that, what you do is you can go in and archive your Padlet so that it still exists but it isn't accessible. So if I go to archive, it is now on my archived Padlets. I have a lot in there. So owner of the Padlet would need to unarchive it for you to access it. So once it's there, it still exists in data form. You can't look at it or anything. So again, that's why I went over that export piece so you could see how to do that. So if you need to make space in your regular recent if you need to make space in here, just keep in mind that archived piece is there so you can kind of hide the padlets you're done with that you're not using that aren't like actively being used. Um, but for now, it does look like they probably opened it up so that there's a little bit more access for free because of folks needing to use it. I'll leave us open for a couple more questions, but if those aren't all, if there aren't any more questions, I'm going to wrap us up, guys. I really appreciate you taking the time to join me today for this little short demo on Padlet. Please feel free to reach out to me. Um, again, it's NA Bond at Bermudian or at, Bermudian, at IU12.org. Um, and here are, I, most of these slides in here are things that I showed you. Uh, there's the tips on the grades. So just keep that in mind and there's archiving. If you go back to that slide deck, it's really just placeholders to give you an idea of how to use Padlet. As a reminder, everything will be posted on the learnon.iu12 website.
and I will be sending you out to Act 48 as soon as I end this. So if there aren't any more questions, I hope you guys have a fabulous day. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it.